got a little production job uh, which involves um, turning on a mandrel. Um, you don't see much turning on mandrels, so I thought I'd share it with you all. Um, aluminium blanks, um, 50 diameter, and they're cut off um, in my usual method on an evolution chop saw. I've got to take it very gently with this because it'll clog the blade. I spray WD-40 on it and won't have you to do the job. Um, but chopped off, yeah, and it will cope with 50 diameter. First job, as you can see with this one, part it off and drill a 21 mil hole. So I've set up with a lay, uh, in the lathe. Uh, first job, face the face. Always seems to be the first job with any turning work, face it off. So as I said, 50 mil diameter, it's a uh, piece of aluminium. And uh, let's just clean this face up where it was chopped off. The saw doesn't get it perfectly, but leaves it within about a mil or so. I dare say I could mess about with it and set it up really square. Um, yeah, but hey ho, it doesn't take two seconds to face it. Love working with aluminium. Got aluminium um, tips in my tip tool. And as you can see, my lathe tool is a bit high there. Can't get to the middle. Let's sort that out first. Right, I've reset the tool. Let's try that again, shall we? Again, it's a question of the repeatability with this comp with this um, quick change tool post. Um, and as you all probably know by now, I'm working on the building of a replacement, which, once I set the tool on centre, should stay on centre. Here we are, very nearly there. Maybe another little scratch, I think, let's speed things up. Finish cutting my face. Here we are, in the intermittent cut is gone. that's it, faced off. The next job is going to be drill a hole. So the finished hole diameter, once bored, is going to be 23 millimetres. Now this might sound a bit uh, sort of abrupt, but I'm going to go straight in, no centre drill, no nothing, with a 21 mil drill. I'll spray it with a little bit of WD-40, the lathe can cope with it, go straight through. Um, as with any sort of production job, it's all about the time it takes. I could centre drill it, um, you know, drill it up with a 10 mil drill from there, then put it, you know, a 15 and then the 21. Finish size is 23, I went straight through with a 21 mil drill. Right, I'm going to get a bit of chatter when I start, because the point of that 21 mil drill is no centre drill, no anything, and I want it to just start through. So it's going to chatter and bother a little bit, but it will leave my hole with plenty of meat in it. As you can see, I've got vibration there. Eh? And I have my stuff in front of the lens. So once the drill is completely entered into the aluminium, the shutter will stop. I can speed things up, give it another spray, and it will be drilling a lot faster. Just speed it off. Okay, in now. I'll give it a spray. Try not to drop the spray bottle. Bit of WD-40 in there. I was running about 350. Yeah, something like 450. Here we go. Good, stop shattering. And away we go. As I said, it's aluminium. It'll go through this like that set. Uh, you can see it's horse in its way through. 40mm thick this part, so once you get to about 20 mil, I'll wind out, give it another spray, stop it to weld into the tip of my abuse, and continue on the rest of the way through. Okay, and that's a 21 mil drill, right through, one go, no centre drilling, no nothing, running, well, true-ish, um, but with plenty of meat left in there for me to clear it out uh, when I put the boring bar up, 
to the 23 mil finished element. So having already done one, that's two, three to go, and that's step one. Lots of fifth one done, and as you can see on this little lathe, it doesn't take long to fill the bed up with swarf. Right, so that's the bed cleaned out. Let's make some more swarf. Next job, turn it round, hold it on the machine face, bore it out. So I've turned it round on the chuck, and now I'm going to face the other side. I've done a couple of scratches already. Um, I've set a zero on my DRO at where I want to be, and when I get down to zero, that will leave the overall thickness of my part one millimetre oversized. That will be 35 mil, and my finished size is going to be 34 mil, and I'll do that once I put it on the mandrel. So there we are, 0.3 left to go. I'm using the boring bar to face it so I can do it in one operation, one tool. I can face and bore in one go. So let's just face this off with the boring bar. So I've set the zero on my DRO in two different directions. One is zero for facing, which leaves me a mill oversized. And my DRO zero in the other direction, when I'm machining through the bore, will leave my bore to my finished size. So I've just touched off on my bore. My DRO is telling me I've got 0.67, so that's just over a mill to come out. I'm going to take this cut under feed. Let's pull it out. Just the scratch to start with. I've set the stop on my carriage. Um, I'm feeding in until I get to within a visual close of the stop. And then basically I drop the feed out and wind to the stop. And that avoids my pouring bar hitting my jaws at the back. So I can see there, into my stop and back out. Right, next cut. This will need half a millimetre in the bowl. In again. I'm taking about 0.4 a side out of the ball now. I aim to finish these in three cuts. Well, I do three cuts and then run the boring bar through again to give myself a finishing cut. Once this cut is finished, I pull the boring bar out, get rid of the swarp off it, and run through taking the last uh, 0.25 a side. And then a final cut just to take any spring out of the boring bar. Okay, let's get rid of that swarf. So for the finishing cut, I'm going to wind my DRO to zero. Here we are, that'll be three cuts. Uh, let's start cutting. When I've run through the back of this cut, I won't bring the boring bar back out through without stopping the chuck first. There is a likelihood if there's any spring in it, that it'll leave a spiral in the bore. Um, and I want it to be quite a nice finish in there, so I'm going to stop the chuck, let it come to a stop, and then pull the boring bar out, and then run a spring cut. So I can see my stop coming up now. Knock the feed off. Just go to my stop, stop the chuck, come back out. Let's just remove that bit of swarf, start it up again, and just run a spring cut through. Here we go. As you can see, it's taking a minuscule amount of the ball. Probably a couple of hundreds aside that. 
once that gets to the end, stop the shop again, bring the mowing bar out, and we'll have a measure. I've actually got the mandrel, which I use, I'm using as a gauge, um, and I'm looking for about uh, 0 0.02, 0 0.05, and thou or two clearance on the mandrel. This is the second one I've done. I've tested it on the first one, and it was absolutely fine with, uh, at the zero on my DRO, as long as I ran, ran a spring cut through. Really, there. cut right through. Stop the chuck. Bring the tool out, and we'll have a measure. Okay, so let's try the mandrel in the hole. Fits in there nicely. Tiniest bit of movement. A little bit more. Okay, happy with that. Now this mandrel diameter is 22.95. Uh, between 22.95 and 22.97, something like that. About a thou clear on the 23 mil nominal. And I have bored this um, and measured it with the calipers to 23. That is zero on my DRO. If I go zero on my DRO on every one, I will get an identical diameter every time. Or, you know, within a couple of microns, so to speak. Um, so, yeah, happy with that. And it'll be fitting on the mandrel afterwards. And I shall talk about the mandrel shortly. So as I'm going to call this uh, particular video turning on an expanding mandrel, I think we need to look at the expanding mandrel. So basically what I've got here is a turned piece of aluminium. The large section here will fit in, in this case, my three jaw chuck. Um, people talk about three jaw chucks being accurate to within like four thou, that sort of thing. I think I must be one of the lucky ones, um, although I bought, I did purchase the lathe new. My three jaw chuck actually runs within a couple of hundredths of a millimeter. I can put the clock on it when it's running, and you know it's negligible. It's a couple of hundredths, so perhaps I'm lucky. Perhaps because it's new and it'll start to go out of tolerance pretty quickly. But um, I'm, you know, as long as you've got the full jaw coverage, which this. Uh, uh, length of this diameter will cover it and the diameter seems to work out well um, it's about I don't know 27 mil something like that 28 mil something like that diameter uh, maybe 30 uh, it seems to be very accurate holding at that point um, so anyway to talk about the expanding mandrel basically it's hollowed out um, very difficult for me to show um, see if I can get a picture in there get a bit of light um, it's drilled and tapped m8 in the bottom um, then there's a little bit of a clearance hole and then a 60 degree taper and then a counterbore in the front to thin the metal down a little. Um, secondary to that, I've basically just hacksawed um, three cuts with a hacksaw. One, two, three, all done by eye, um, but, you know, as you can see, fairly uniformly. Um, some hacksaw grooves right down to with, um, so that it actually enters the threaded area. So what I've also got is an M8 Allen bolt and I've machined the underside of the head um, concentric with the threads uh, to 60 degree taper um, and it just takes a 6mm Allen key. When this Allen bolt is screwed down in to the expanding mandrel, um, the taper on the Allen bolt meets up with the taper down in the bore and actually spreads out the wings um, as you can see, the six wings there and spreads them out to grip the component. Now, of course, the important thing is you don't want it spreading out miles and miles. It'd be no good the OD of this being 22 mil and the bore of whatever you're trying to hold being 23 because you wouldn't keep it concentric. Um, the bore of the components going on this, uh, I, I, off the top of my head, I think it was 23 mil. And this is just a running fit in that bore so that the slightest slightest expansion of this mandrel uh, grips the component that I'm going to be machining really solidly. I don't get any slip or anything like that and it grips it really solidly. So I'll, I'll show you me fitting it up and putting one of the components on the mandrel.